Hello there, I'm here to give a tutorial on how to make your own treacherous trials levels. So to start with, you're first going to need to navigate to the Treacherous Trials Plus GitHub page, which is located at this address. Now, once you're here, you need to click code and go to download zip. Alternatively, if you use git here, you can also use the link given here to clone the directory. But for our purposes, we can just use the zip. We click download zip, and I'll download a zip file for the code. Once it is finished downloading, you need to right click on it and select extract here. Alternatively, if you're on Windows or Mac, there might be dedicated tools where you can click unzip or the like to do the exact same function. Next, we need to download Unity. To this, we need to go to unity.com and select download. Select for whichever device you have. So for example, you might go to Windows and it will download an EXE or a corresponding variant for Mac, which you can run and get Unity Hub. Once Unity Hub is installed, it may prompt you to make an account or to log in if you already have one. Once you have that set up, go here and select open. Now we must go to where we downloaded Treacherous Trials Plus, go to where we have the extracted file and select it. So for example, it says for me, Treacherous Trials Plus main and select open. Unity should give this opening dialog, but after it has gone through its motions of setting things up, it should open. It might prompt you to download the proper editor version, but any version of 2021 dot whatever should work fine. So now Unity Editor is opened and the Treacherous Trials Plus files are listed under the assets. You may notice that for some people, all the scenes may not properly load in and to fix this, simply go to the scenes folder and for each scene, drag it to, into this hierarchy box here and select unload scene. Hi, this is Editor Fox. It turns out that OBS did not capture the dialog box for this. Uh, so if what we need to do is we need to right click on the scene name and I'll bring up the box that will give you the, the option to unload. Don't forget to also include the scenes in the menu subfolder. So that includes the credits, the level select, and the title screen. Now finally, reload the title screen and delete the default untitled scene. This is how you manually load the scenes. From here, if you click the test button, which is this play symbol here, you should have a completely functional copy running in the Unity Editor. As you can see, I can select start again, for example, and everything works fine. Move around, jump, and everything works as intended. So now let us specifically look at how to modify the levels. So to modify a given level, you first have to load the scene. So for example, I may load players one and unload the title screen. As you can see, we have level 15 loaded. Since that is the equivalent of players one in the game's files. Now to actually modify the level, we go to window, 2D, Tile Palette. And this opens a separate window on the side. To start with, let's talk about the four different tile maps. So the first one is the solid tile map. And that is the solid blocks that you see. So for example, if we go to the Select tool, pick this block here, and place it, you can see that when we go back and play test, it acts as though it is a solid block. This is what the solid tile map does. The second tile map is the hazard tile map, which is exactly as you'd expect. If you touch it, it kills you. So for example, if we select a spike, say this spike, and place it, and we go to test, you can see that when we touch it, it does in fact kill us. And now for the third tile map, the deco tile map. 
This is intended to be the blocks in the middle. So if we go back to our example with the solid block we placed here, if we select this tile and place it on the deco tile map, it is now decorated. And that is how all these decorations work. And finally, the backing tile map. This is for any background objects, like for example, this triangular structure. Another way to use the backing tile map is to highlight where certain blocks switch. So for example, if we take this block here and delete everything on the solid tile map, and on the deco tile map, you can see that there is a outline here on the backing tile map. And the purpose of this is to highlight to the player that there is ordinarily a block there that they can't see. And that if they switch while standing in that block, they get killed. This is to make the game more fair. Another way the backing tile map might be used is to make these shadows. These shadows also serve as another way to highlight where blocks might be, even if the player can't see them with how they're currently shifted. You can see that there are three copies of every different sprite. This is not an accident. If you select the first one, that is always enabled. The second one and the third one are alternating between switched. So as an example, let's look at these spikes. This is the red spike on the second location. So these start enabled, but can be toggled off. These blue spikes start disabled and can be toggled off. These spikes are always enabled, and they're on the first location. Fantastic. So now I know how to place blocks. You may notice, however, that in the tile palette, there really doesn't seem to be the full range of blocks. For example, there's this vertical bar, but in the tile palette, there's only the horizontal one. So how do we get the vertical bar? Well, it's actually quite simple. The first, we select the horizontal bar and place it. Now we go to the select tool and then select the horizontal bar. Now over here in the inspector on the right, we have a whole list of options, including offset and rotation. The rotation is the big one that we care about. To make a horizontal bar piece into a vertical bar piece, all we need to do is rotate it 90 degrees. And to do that, we can go to the Z of the rotation and set it to 90. This works for every block. For more advanced users, you might notice that if we were to select, say, another spike, so to do this, remember, we go to the hazard tile map, and then select a spike, if we try to place a spike on top of an already existing spike, it completely overwrites it. But let's say that we want to have two spikes on top of each other. To do this, we have to go down here on the scroll bar, scroll up, and then remove this box that says lock Z position. What the Z position does is it's kind of like a height map. No matter what height the block is located on, whatever Z position it's on, the block still affects the player. But it's on a different height and is therefore in a different block. So you can see if we select Z position 1 and then try the same thing where we select a spike and place it say here, you can see that they now overlap. If we try to erase, it only erases on the Z position that we have currently listed. So if we want to have both spikes be deleted, we also have to go back to Z position 0 and erase it there as well. And now we've fully erased both pairs of spikes. This is the basics of how to manipulate the tile maps to make custom levels in Treacherous Trials. Now for more advanced users, you may notice that back in the Assets tab here, there is the entire scripts folder. These can be modified however you see fit to allow ultimate customizability so long as you know how to code. So finally, let's just say that you've made a beautiful mod and wish to share it with the world. To do this, we need to create an executable file that other people can run.
to do this, we go to File, and go to, and go to Build Settings. Now we can select what platform we wish to build for, Windows, Mac, and Linux, and then we can build to make an executable file. We have to give a name, so I might say Treacherous Trials Epic Cool Mod. And save. Unity might give a no notification if you have not saved your scenes. So save them. And then Unity will create a build that you can distribute to other players so that they can build your mod. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make treacherous trials maps. The Unity editor is extremely powerful, and I couldn't cover every facet of it in this video, but I hope that I've highlighted just how to do the basics. According to YouTube statistics, I do not have enough viewers to warrant YouTube statistics, so I don't know. Cool.